All right, so the first part of this stage is going to be kind of tricky. So I'm going to give you fair warning that regardless what happens, you can always go back and undo. But at the end of it, I'm going to show you how to make any edits to the vectors that you create. So if what you have is not perfect the first time, don't fret. By the end of this process, you'll know how to go back and add to and make changes and edit. So let's jump in and get started. With the image open, I'm going to hit Command-0 just to make sure I can see the entire document. And we're going to go towards the bottom middle of our toolbox and locate the free transform pen tool. This pen tool is located underneath your regular pen tool and it has a little dotted line associated with it. With that one selected, check out what we have in the options at the very top. There's different kind of vector paths you can create. You can create full on shapes, but in our case, we're going to create just the vector path and we're going to use that path later to mask off our car. So make sure path is selected. And also there's different modes you can work in. In our case, we want to make sure combine shapes mode is selected as well. The final thing we want to set is we want to turn this into a magnetic pin. And if you click on the little cog wheel, we can open up the options for this. We'll set the thickness to be two pixels. The color of it is going to be a light red. We'll set the curve fit, keep that at two pixels. The width will be 15 at 10% contrast and a frequency pretty low at 25. With that done, this is preset how magnetic or how uh, the Photoshop can tell the difference between two different edges on an image. You can always go back and readjust that, but this is what the book suggests for this project. Now I'm going to zoom in to this leftmost side view mirror. Remember you can hit the command and the plus sign and to move around you can always hit the space bar. This will turn your cursor into a little hand and then you can click around until you can see exactly the area you want to work on. We're going to start at the bottom corner of where the um, side view mirror meets the car. With one click it'll start your anchor point and as you move your mouse around I'm not holding down my mouse. I'm simply letting Photoshop find the edge of the car and the background of the image. Now if you reach the edge of your document and you need to see more, you could always hit the space bar and move around, but for the most part all I'm doing is clicking and moving until it gets the edge of the car. Now I'm intentionally not getting the wheel because later on we'll go back and we'll add the wheel to our selection. So just let it pick up whatever it can for this particular selection. The whole purpose of using the magnetic lasco is that it will quickly and easily locate those edges so I don't have to do a lot of clicking and dragging of Bezier curves. Now if you do reach a point that has a hard edge and there's not a lot of contrast, like in this area, you can click once. This will automatically add an anchor point and very slowly and carefully you can add more anchor points until you get past that rough patch. Here is one area where you may want to manually go through and add some anchor points. You can see how it's getting off by a little bit. If, again, if this is happening to you, that is totally fine. Later on I'm going to show you how to go back and actually refine the edge and bring it back to where it should be. Again, here's a solid point. I'm going to click once and then keep moving up. Hold down your space bar and slowly and carefully move along that particular edge. Again, right here there may not be a lot of contrast so I'm going to slowly move through and if need be I can always click to add a point but if it gets off by a little bit that is okay. Later on, we'll go back and clean up those stray vector points. Again, it's getting off. I'm not going to worry about it. Again, clicking only where I know there's a corner 
or I know if it's getting off by a good bit. Back around. Now when we reach our original starting point, you'll notice that our cursor will change from a magnet to adding a little circle underneath the magnet. When I click here, this will close off our path, and then you can see the individual vector points that make up this particular shape. With this done, let's also open up our Paths panel. I can see my Paths panel is nested underneath my Layers panel, but remember you can go to Window and choose Paths to open it up. I'm going to drag it off to the side. Now your panel should look like this. It should have a gray background with a white silhouette of the car, of the path that we just created. Seeing both of these side by side, both the paths and the layers, is going to come in handy because we're going to add a mask to this car. The first thing we want to do in the Paths panel, click on the little options and choose Save Path. This will ask to give the path a name. We're going to call it Car Outline and say OK. And now we can deselect our car outline by clicking on the empty area down below the path. Notice that when you do this, it looks like the path has disappeared, but it's still saved. We can always re-click on it and go back to it when necessary. This is a good saving point, so let's go to File and Save and continue to the next part. Now with everything saved, let's go back and add to the existing path and pick up those wheels that we missed. Let's go up to View and Zoom to 100%. Then we can move down so we can see both the wheel on the right or the left hand side. This time when we go to our tools panel, let's choose the regular pen tool. We're going to click on the car outline in your paths panel to activate the outline. And up at the very top, make sure we're working in combine shapes mode under the options bar. Also, make sure we're working in path mode on the far left hand side. It's going to be very, very important that we're working in path and combine shapes mode. If we're working in the wrong mode, what we're about to do will not work out. Now the book is actually going to be super detailed about how it wants you to draw this off. I'm going to zoom in to the leftmost tire. And essentially what we're doing is outlining the bottom edge of this tire. I'm going to start right where the inside back wheel meets the inside of the undercarriage and click once. This will add our beginning insertion point. And remember, this pen tool works very similar to the pen tool in Illustrator. If you click once again, it'll give you a straight line. But if you click and drag, you get your little Bezier curves and this will give you a curved line. Do the best you can to curve around the edge of the tire. So I'm going to click once wherever I know it's straight. If I see a curved edge, I'm going to click and drag and let it be curved. Now, if necessary, you can hold down the command key and then click on a Bezier curve and adjust that curve by itself. You can bring this one in, so I know this one needs to be a little straighter. And then we're going to go straight across to here. Here's a curved edge. Now, if you don't want to bother with the curved edge, you can always do a series of straight lines. I will let you get away with that for this project. This is a pretty straight edge, so we're going to go straight up. Again, if you need to move your document around, hit the space bar, and then click, and then click again until we reach the top edge. Once we reach this top edge, we need to reconnect to our beginning insertion point. And I'm going to do this by simply overlapping and clicking right here. So essentially we've drawn off two shapes, a shape for the tire and a shape for the main body. Let's repeat this process for the tire that's on the right hand side now. Again, we're going to start at the bottom of the undercarriage, click once to add a starting point, then we can click and move around and get the other part of the wheel. If you reach a part that's curved, click and drag and click again for a straight line, then click and drag for a curved line. Click again. Again, if your points are off by a little bit, you can either do Command Z to undo the last one and click again, or you can hold down the Command key and reposition or adjust that last point. Again, we'll keep clicking and dragging 
until we go to the very top edge of the wheel. Once we reach the top, we want to overlap these two shapes. So I'm going to click over here and then reconnect down at the beginning point. If you check out your path outline of your car, you should see that it's added on the wheels portion down at the very bottom of your car outline. What we want to do next is to merge both of these wheel shapes with the main body of the car. With the car outline path still selected, go up to your options and then choose merge shape components. This will merge all three of the pieces together into one solid piece. This is a good saving point, so let's go to File and Save and continue on. The next thing the book's going to have you do is to clean up your vector path using some of the other vector drawing tools. I'm going to zoom in so I can see the side of my vector outline really close, and you can see some of these areas that I had difficulty with. One of the first and easiest things to do is use your selection tools, and these are the vector selection tools. This is the path and the direct selection tool. This works exactly the same as in Illustrator. So with the white arrow direct selection tool, you can go to your path and click on individual anchor points, and then click on the little Bezier handles and control the curvature of them. Or you can click on individual points and reposition and place those where they need to be. If you have some extra points that shouldn't be there, like for this instance, if I got rid of this point here, I could just reconnect both of those. If you look underneath your pen tool, you can add or delete anchor points. With delete anchor point, I can click on an existing anchor point, in this case this one right here, and it will delete it away. Now when it does this, it's going to reconnect them and change up the Bezier curves. This is where holding down the command key and clicking on the inside of it may actually come in handy to readjust those Bezier curves. Now yours may be slightly different, but the main gist of it is that you are to go through and clean up any points that may have gone astray. So I'm just going to go around for a second and see if there's anything major that I may have missed. Let's zoom back out so I can actually see it. The other thing you can do is add on to any areas that you missed. I can see that I missed this underside of the carriage, and the quickest way to add on to this is simply choosing my regular pen tool, and then I'm going to use the same technique that I did with the car. Make sure path is selected, excuse me, the wheels of the car. Make sure you're working in combined shapes mode, and with the car outline selected, we can click, and I'm just going to use a series of straight edges to pick up the rest of this portion. Again, your selection doesn't have to be 100% perfect. If it's off by a little bit, that'll be okay for the purposes of this project. But the main skill to learn here is being able to edit and add on to your vector paths in, Illust in Photoshop. Once I've got the major outline done, remember these have to overlap. <coughs> I can see in my car outline, it's, it's small, but it's there. It's added to that particular path. And the last step to this is to merge them together. So go back up to the options and choose Merge Shapes until it gets that full shape. Let's continue on. I'm going around looking for any stray points. You can see there were a couple of them here, so I'm going to click on this one and drag on the Bezier curve until it gets a nice smooth curve. Same way for up top here, that one's off by a bit. Let's smooth this one out. And up here at the very top, let's smooth out these two Bezier curves. There's a dent in that car. <clears throat> and I think that's got it. I'll do Command-0 and back out. Let's do a save one more time. Now let's take our vector outline and turn it into a vector mask. If we go to our paths panel, make sure the car outline is selected. And in your layers panel, make sure the car layer is selected. With both of those selected, let's go up to layer, down to vector mask, and choose current path. This will take the current path that was created and mask off everything that was not selected. If you look at your Layers panel, 
Just like with a uh, layer mask, you get an extra icon, but in this case, instead of it being black, everything that's gray is what's masked off. All right, with the hard part of creating a custom vector shape out of the way, let's slow it down and move on to something a little bit simpler. We're gonna create some regular vector shapes in the layers. If we go to our layers panel, let's turn off visibility for our car shape and I'm gonna click down the empty area just to make sure that layer is deselected. If we go over to our tools panel, underneath your direct selection tool are a variety of common vector shapes. Choose the rounded rectangle tool, and let's look up at the options at the very top. First off, we're gonna be working in shape mode. You can also see that in this mode, we get a fill and a stroke color and all of the different options that go with it. Let's set our fill color to be this dark blue, this one right here. We're gonna keep our stroke at none, and let's set our radius to be 50 pixels. With that done, make sure you can see the top right edge. We're gonna click and drag, and you get a preview of what your rectangle will look like until you release, and then it commits to that particular shape. Now you'll notice that the, uh, in your layers panel, we get a new layer called the rounded rectangle, and it's got a special icon indicating that it's a vector shape. You can always deselect this shape by clicking on the empty space, and then you can reselect it again by clicking on the, uh, the rounded rectangle sh shape layer. You'll also notice that we have our properties panel that control all the properties for the shape that we've created. I'm gonna click down so I can see all of the properties and this includes the X and Y location, the height and the width, the colors of both the stroke and the fill, and also the roundedness of all of the corners. Let's give it an exact size it's by changing the width to be 500. Hit the Tab key, and let's set the height of it to be 1230. And hit the Tab key one more time to commit that change. You can also change up these numbers by clicking or hovering over the X or the Y field. You can see how it turns into what's called the little scrubby. If we click on the X and drag, you can see this will increase or decrease the number and change it left or right. In our case, we want the X field to be about 1865. So let's move it over till that number comes up right about there and we'll release and the Y fill that says about 3 eighths of an inch from the top of the canvas. We're just gonna eyeball that. So I'm gonna click and drag until it's moved up pretty close to the edge right about there. Uh, 3 eighths of an inch is about 50 pixels. And so this looks pretty good right there. The last thing it'll have us do is to set our Y position automatically to zero pixels. Now we'll put it all the way to that top edge. Now, here's a tricky part. Notice that I've got my vector shape selected and I can see the little Bezier points, or excuse me, the, the vector points around it. I wanna keep my layer selected, but I wanna deselect the shape. So to do this, click once on your rounded rectangle tool, and this will deselect the shape, but stay on the same layer. What we wanna do next is go to our options at the very top and let's change the mode to subtract from front shape mode now when i click and drag on the inside of this shape it's going to create a new rounded rectangle and it's going to subtract from that front shape if yours didn't work out this way simply undo it and make sure that the layer is selected but the shape itself is deselected. Let's look over in our properties panel and give it a specific height and width dimensions. So we want the width, in this case, to be 300. Oops. The height of it will be 300. And the X and Y position will be 1965 with the Y of 135, exactly right there. towards the bottom of the properties panel. Let's set the corner radius for all of these to be zero. And if you make sure the link is checked on, this will set all of them to zero. And let's change the corners of the top of our blue rounded rectangle. To select it, let's go back to our tools, 
choose your direct selection tool. Click once on the blue rounded rectangle. You can see it becomes selected. And when we go over to our properties panel, let's unlink this one and set these top two edges to be zero. So the top right will be zero and the top left will be zero. Whoops. When you hit return, you can see both of those edges are now square, but the bottom edges should be rounded off. To deselect it, you can just click off of it. And this is a good point to go to file and save to continue to the next part. Now let's make some white rectangles at the bottom of our magazine cover. Going back to your tools panel, choose the regular rectangle tool, go up to your options, make sure you're working in shape mode. We're going to set the fill color to be white. We're going to set the stroke to be a dark red. This looks good here. And let's set the stroke width to be 15 pixels. In the path options, Make sure you've got new layer as your selection. And in the further path options, you can click on the little cog wheel. Make sure your thickness is set to one point, And we're going to set the color back to being the default light blue. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and click and drag to create one new rectangle. Remember when you do this, it's going to create its own layer. And you've also got some options in your properties panel. In the properties panel, let's set up these options. Let's give it a width of 600 by 600 and a position of an X at 200 and a Y of 2430. When we hit return, that'll place it exactly where it needs to be. But I did see I've made one mistake. The height of it should be 500 pixels. 600 by 500, that looks correct. Now to make a copy of this, Go to the top of your tool panel and choose the move tool. I'm going to zoom in so we can see this part. When you hold down the option key, notice that your cursor changes to a double arrow. And when you click and drag, it will copy whatever layer you have selected. Now I've got my smart guides turned on. So I'm going to click and drag till it moves off to roughly about the center. And when I let go, you can see a copy of that layer has been created. Rectangle number one, copy is the layer that we have. Just to avoid confusion, let's double click on the name of rectangle one. We're going to call this left inset. There we go. Double click on rectangle one copy. We're going to call this center inset. And let's make one more copy holding down the option key, clicking and dragging again. And let's change the copy of the center to right inset and hit return. Now with this last right inset still selected, let's set the X position for it to be exactly at 1700 pixels. That'll move it over just a little bit. The final thing we want to do for this is to make sure they're all aligned properly. So in the layers panel, hold down your shift key and select the center and the left inset. So the right, center, and left layers should all be selected. And if you look up at the very top, you've got your alignment controls in your panels. I'm going to click on the Distribute Horizontal Center button at the far right-hand side. And when we do that, that'll evenly distribute them and have them perfectly aligned with each other. This is a good saving point, so let's go to File and Save and go on to the next part. Now let me show you the power of using auto select when working with multiple layers. We want to place three different images on top of the three different insets. So let's go to file and place embedded. I'm going to choose inset number one and say place, then hit the return key to lock it in. Let's do the same for the other two. File, place embedded, inset number two. We'll place it and say return and then file place embedded one last time to choose inset number three and hit return to place that one. If we drag off our layers panel, here's what we're looking at. You've got three different insets, one, two, and three on top of the three different uh, inset shapes that we have. Now to quickly select each individual layer, 
With our Move tool selected, make sure Auto Select Layer is checked on. When we do this, we can click on one of the images and drag it until it's on top of the inset layer. Then, without having to go back to our Layers panel, we can automatically click on the next image and drag it. Notice that when I click on each one of these, it automatically jumps to the appropriate layer. Then we can click and drag this one and place it on top of here. This lets it, makes it much, much easier to position and reselect and reset everything without having to go back and forth and choosing the, uh, the individual layer that you're working on. So having auto select turned on is definitely one of those things that I usually have set up by default. This is a good saving point, so let's go to File and Save let's start creating some clipping masks. So here's how to make sure a clipping mask is properly set up in your layers panel. If you go to your layers panel, notice that the pictures are right now all grouped together at the top and the right, center, and left are all grouped together below them. We need to make sure each picture is on top of the correct corresponding shape. So I'm going to click on inset number one, this is the leftmost picture, and drag it down until it's on top of the left inset shape. Let's go back to inset number two, click and drag until it's on top of the center shape, and then inset three should automatically be on top of the right inset shape. So the corresponding image is on top of the corresponding shape. Now with that done, let's choose inset number one, and since it's on top of the shape, we can go to layer, down to create clipping mask, and when you select this, notice that the shape is now masking off or acting as the masked area for the image that's on top of it. Check out our layers panel. The image on top, the inset number one image, is being clipped with a little arrow pointing down to the shape that's below it. Let's repeat this process for the other two. Choose inset number two. Notice that it's on top of the center inset shape. And we go to image, excuse me, go to layer, down to create clipping mask, and it clips inside of it. Now let's choose inset number three, go to layer, and create the final clipping mask. With that done, Let's scroll down to our car layer, turn on visibility again, and when we select the car layer, I'm gonna do Command-0 and back out a bit. With our Move tool, I'm gonna to click and drag until it's just touching the top of those images, and I'm also gonna click on the car layer and drag up until it's on top of the stacking order, on top of inset number three. So this should be the setup for your car magazine layout to end up stage two.